obviously nice to have Pat Cummins back, but it's going to be a pretty tough selection call for you guys. Yeah, it's going to be a tough selection call, Katie. It's been tough all season. Again, I keep talking about getting this balance right between the one extra batsman or the one extra bowler. So we're working through that at the moment. It's nice to have Pat coming back. It's been a long rehabilitation. He's very excited. Um, I'm sure everyone in Australian cricket's excited to see him play. It'd be nice to see him having a game for the Scorchers. We know, obviously, Alfonso's been battling the back. Would you look at sort of resting him and making your decision a bit easier? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to make it any easier because, you know, Pat Cameron's still a silly young bowler. We go in there with a, quite an inexperienced bowling attack. And it's always nice to have the Alfonso Thomas or the Michael Beers in your side because they bring that experience. So, again, it certainly uh, gives us a few headaches. I guess nice headaches to have because they're all quality players. But uh, it's certainly opening up a, some real competition for places in the team. Jay, are you surprised that bowlers are really dictating the terms? In the game? It used to be limited over cricket. Batsmen used to just rule the world, and the game seemed to be almost put that way. But very different season this year. Yeah, I'm really enjoying seeing how the 2020 is evolving, Tomo. Uh, I've said a number of times that it seems to, uh, to me it's a real old man's game now, not a young man's game because you're under so much pressure all the time. And it's nice to see the bowlers having an impact. And you know, I, I guess what you, what's been successful for us for the last two years is we've played five specialist bowlers with that in mind, that whatever the, the target is, we'll be able to bowl them out with that um, it's changed a bit this year, but certainly we've seen it over and over that the bowlers are having an impact, and that's exciting for the game of cricket. You've spoken about the long process for Pat and uh, him feeling as though perhaps he was ready a bit earlier. How exciting is it, you know, with that built-up hunger, a guy who can bowl that quick and, and obviously is going to be very hungry given his weight? Yeah, particularly at the Wacker. So, you know, it's going to be nice to see Sean Tate and uh, Pat Cummins bowling here tomorrow. I think that's going to be two of the fastest bowlers in Australia. It's going to be great for the game. Um, and he's, look, he's delivered before. Um, hopefully he's ready, he's ready to go. He's done everything possible. He's ticked every box. And he's just excited to get out there and bowl at the Wacker. And from our point of view, that's why we signed him, to see one of the world's fastest bowlers bowling at the Wacker. I mean, there's not much more exciting. It doesn't get much more exciting than that. Despite the results, the wins, you probably haven't got the uh, the scores with the bat that you've been after. Do you feel like that's maybe just around the corner? Well, I'm hopeful. I'm certainly hopeful, that's for sure. But as um, Tomo said before, the bowlers are getting really skillful in this game, whether it's uh, the strategies to try and take wickets early and swing the ball and to bowl well at the death. So we've seen examples of that throughout. Um, certainly oppositions are doing the same thing. We, we know that Simon Kadic has been fantastic at the top of the order. Our senior players or our top six have to take responsibility and if one of them can score over 70 or 80 usually in the game. Yesterday Adelaide were talking up their record against you guys. Do you read much into that? Or? No, it's the first I've heard about it. So um, no, they can talk it up as much as they like. We're, we're playing at home, we're playing at the furnace and we love playing here, we've been successful here so far this year um, and we're, while they've got a very good bowling attack, they've lost some players as well, so Kling is a big loss for them. Um, he was, the, I guess, the difference in the game a few weeks ago, so whatever's happened before has happened, we're just, we can't wait. Destiny's in our, in our own hands in the sense that if we win tomorrow, we can have a semi-final and even push for a home semi-final, so um, that's the exciting part of it. When you know you can control the outcome, um, going forward, that's an exciting thing. How do you expect them to respond after that, that Melbourne Stars game? And I suppose, do you see their recent form as, oh, I suppose, without Boda? Yeah, well, Boda's coming back. Oh, he's certainly made the trip. So how he's, um, it's going to be interesting to see how he goes when he bats on this bouncy wicket. It's going to be a fast wicket and bouncy wicket. So it's going to be interesting to see how he bats on that. He's a very good leader, though. And I know he has a big impact on South Australian cricket so um, I'm sure they'll welcome him back and uh, he'll be looking forward to getting out there again but equally we'll be aggressive against him on this bouncy wicket. You mentioned the potential for a home semi-final how much of an advantage is it to get home games in 2020 cricket? Yeah well you have seen with the incredible interest in in uh, Scorchers cricket here. It's always nice to play in front of your home crowd. Um, that was an incredible semi-final last year against the Stars. Uh, anyone who was here, that was one of the most exciting sporting events I've seen actually. So it will have some advantage. We get to play on this wicket more often than the others now. And I think we're starting over the last little bit to gain some home ground advantage there with the, the um, being able to bat on this wicket and also to be able to bowl on the wicket. So there's definitely some home 
ground advantage here. And just on Cadditch, obviously he's got the gig in the AFL next year. Has he touched base with you in regards to the possibility of playing on the Scorchers one more uh, we haven't talked about it too much yet. I know there's some other teams sniffing around to see him, to get him to play next year. We've seen with the guys like Brad Hodge and um, even Brad Hogg that, as and I keep saying, it's a senior man's game. So if Simon Kadic has even got the, a millimetre of interest in playing next year, we'll certainly be doing everything we can to have him here. He's he's a brilliant leader, great person. He's batted really well. You know he's going to be meticulously um, prepared. So. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll work through the um, the finer details, but if he wants to play, obviously we'll welcome him back. Yeah. Do you think it would be a case of either play for the Scorchers or he wouldn't play at all? Would, uh, would it be an automatic that he comes back to the Scorchers? Oh, you'd have to ask him. I'd like to think so, yeah. Like I say, I know there's other franchises already sniffing around him, and I'm sure some of the other, that's the business we're in, fortunately or unfortunately, with the franchise system. but. Um, you know, you'd have to ask him that, but I'd be confident that if he's going to play, he'd want to play here. Just on the wicket, um, obviously, looks a bit grand. You mentioned fast, bouncy surface. Are you expecting it could be a bowler's game on that basis against him? Yeah, I think that whoever, we're going to have to bat well, and we've said that throughout the tournament. Our, one of our top six has to take responsibility, but yes, yeah, certainly, I mean, the, one of the games here, we got brought out for 117 and defended that. We'll certainly be looking with the fast outfield. It'll still be a great wicket to play on. It's a great wicket to bat on. If we can get 150 or 160, we'll be in the game. And what does Michael Beer have to do to, to get in the team? Is there anything more he can do? Oh, there's nothing. I, I've said, I said it to, the, to the, you guys a few weeks ago. It's probably one of the toughest calls we've made in Scorchers, in the short Scorchers history. He's been fantastic for us. Again, it's just the balance of the side. So. He can't do anything more than he's doing. He's been great around the group. He always is. Um, and yeah, there's no reason why he won't play the, the, um, one of the games at the end of the season, maybe the finals. But when you're playing here and the way it, we've balanced it out, he's just missed out, unfortunately.